so you you really think that the origin of of life on earth is a really special event yeah if it did originate on earth my question for those that search for life outside the earth is what if you had a letter from god and the letter said um life didn't originate on earth like would you choose a different profession. Like, it, se- it would seem hopeless. Like, in other words, we only have a sample of one. In fact, we only know of one conscious life form, let alone one planet that has life on it, right? But what if you knew for sure it didn't start here? That means that, like, there's almost nothing about Earth that is um, originated. It didn't originate the life process. So to study purely the origin of life, not life itself, I think that's still fascinating. But how could we learn about, you know, the origin of, of remember, you have to go from inanimate object to a living object, whatever that definition of life is. And I'm not an expert in you know, many definitions, Max, Sarah, you know, many different uh, definitions. But but how do you actually go from, from, from inanimate to animate? It's a huge question. Yeah, but then you don't have to be the place where life originated yeah. to replicate the origin or to under, like, uh, yeah, that's one way to understand something is mm-hmm. to uh, build it. Yeah. But another way is to just observe it. You don't have to truly re uh, engineer from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I. But then, yes, if it didn't originate on Earth, then your intuitions about the basic prerequisites of life are are yeah. off. What's the governing principle, right? Like, may, what is, um, and then you could have just an almost an arbitrary number of possible, like, if life didn't start on Earth. So to me, that's exciting because it's like, we know even less than we thought. <laughs> the thing is it can prosper on earth though. Yeah. So maybe the origin of life is fundamentally different from the, the maintenance of life. Right, and maybe maybe the existence of the earth life symbiosis is critical. I think Sarah, and you talked about Sarah Walker, um, that it's a planetary phenomenon, et cetera, et cetera. So, doesn't that make it less like? In other words, like not only do you need special life conditions to create life, but then sustenance of life, as you say, that also has to be maintained under very specific circumstances by very specific planets and with very specific tectonic activity and moon. And by the way, you need a Jupiter nearby. You need an Earth and a moon system so that you don't get bombarded too early. And I always think like this, like technological life, I haven't said this before really, so I'm just speaking. I usually like to write down before I say it's different thing. But one of the things I thought about- Somebody is, hosts a podcast. <laughs> you should probably accept the fact that you're going to say stupid things every once in a while. Not every once in a while, every, every <laughs> while. I claim that, you know, to get to sending, you know, people to the moon, you know, our planet needed whales and and dinosaurs, right? Like, you don't make a solar panel from another solar panel. Like, you made a solar panel from a factory that melted down glass, silica, you know, aluminum, extruded that using fossil fuels. Where do those fossil fuels come from? Like, so any civilization that's going to be a Dyson, you know, a Kardashev, uh, spe- they, do they have dinosaurs? Like, do they have, like, prebiotic life? Do they have a great oxygenation event? Did they have a di- dimorphism between prokaryotic, eukaryotic? All those hurdles, let's say you give each one, let's say there's eight hurdles. And each one of those has a probability of one in a thousand to go from, you know, uh, eukaryotic, prokaryotic, whatever. Let's say that's a one in a thousand chance. I think it's like one in 10 to the 40th or whatever, if you really do it. But let's say it's first generous nature, one in 10 to the three. Let's say there's eight of those hurdles. That means you have you know, 10 to the to the, uh, to the 24th power, <laughs> uh, different uh, pr- uh, possibility. And that's just with eight. Like the moon has to be there. Jupiter has to be there. Dinosaurs had to be there. All the different things that we have to get to technological life. There's only 10 to the, tw- only, there's 10 to the 22nd, we think, Earth, not Earth, uh, planets in the observable universe, not the galaxy. So that's 100 times fewer than the probability <laughs> to get, you know, 100% clearing these eight very low hurdles of one in a thousand. That's fascinating, because now I really need to listen to your conversation with Lee Cronin, who I believe you had, yeah, because he believes the opposite. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> want to be- have a debate with him. Okay. He, be- he believes uh, that the the way biology evolved on Earth could have evolved almost an infinite number of other ways. So like if you ran Earth over and over and over, you would keep getting life and it would be very different. So it's the the fact that our particular life seems unique is just like, well, because every freaking life is gonna seem unique, but and it'll be very different. It's not like we shouldn't be asking the question of what's the likelihood of getting a human-like thing? Mm. Uh, 
it, because that seems to be super special. It's more like, um, <laughs> how easy is it to make <laughs> slime mold? A, a, anything that has the skills of a human, and, and I don't mean like something with thumbs, but achieving basically a technological civilization. And according to Lee, at least, it's it's like it's it's trivial. I know we we fought. A, I fought a little bit. I'd love to debate him. I think it'd be a lot of fun because we debate with love. When I talk yeah. with Lee, I love him, and he loves me. I think. I hope. 